All right. Happy New Year, 2024. This is just a, a video blog that I do once a year. I, they're, they're stupid. They're silly. They're raw. They're unedited. I, I don't give a flying crap what I put in these videos. These are strictly for me. Um, I only put them out here because I did one once years and years ago. And someone said, hey, bro, that really helped me. Please continue doing these. So I do them for that just to help people out, but also just for me personally. So I can sit back and go, wow, that happened. I lived through that. So 2024. I hate this year. This year sucked. You can see I'm posting this video literally on New Year's Eve. Like, I just do not want to do this video, but I didn't think I'd have a lot to record until I started thinking about it. And it's been a busy year. So let's start off with the job interview. Um, I work for a large organization and my boss moved up the org chain and that left a vacancy and I applied for it. Didn't think I would get it because I'm already about as high up in the organization as I thought I was going to get. I'm actually higher than I thought I would ever get, but uh, I actually got the job. So, wow, yay me. I'm a division chief now. I never thought I would say that. But uh, So I manage multiple supervisors that manage multiple teams who have other teams underneath them. It's like I'm so far up the org chain, I never thought I would get this high. It's, it's like ridiculous. The more I say no, the more they promote me. But uh, it's not been a fun job. It just has not. Um, I now have a newfound respect for my previous boss because this is not a fun job. My last one was was okay. I mean, we had a pretty tight knit few teams, and we'd all work together. We got to the point where we could like finish each other's sentences. And this this new job and these new teams are they're challenging. We don't always get along. Let's put it that way. Ah, yes, relationships. Uh, this is the part of the video I was dreading talking about, but it actually consumes most of the year. I was married. Notice I said was. Um, kind of like a, a prelude of what's going to be happening in this video. But uh, right around December of last year, actually it was actually it was over the summer of last year, um, we really just were not getting along. We were fighting quite a bit. Um, we had talked about divorce several times. It was not fun. And it just escalated and got worse and worse and worse. And I'm not going to divulge my personal life to an extreme depth, but it was not a fun marriage for me at all. And I would suspect she would say the same. It ultimately ended up in me kicking her out. That was painful. That was really painful. But I just, I hit a point where I was like, I'm done. I just, once a person hits that point where they're done, there's no going back. It's just, we're done. And ultimately it led to divorce. Um, this was a long process. This was a very long process. So. I filed for divorce in February and we didn't actually get divorced until September, actually, on my birthday. That's right. I spent my birthday in divorce court. That was just friggin' great. Um, yeah, so far this has not been a fun, happy video, but it does have a better ending, I promise you. Um, so future me, if you're watching this video, just, you know, don't stop watching it. Keep hope. Uh, but yeah, it was just not a fun year. It's like the whole year was centered around the divorce, going back and forth with the lawyer, dealing with her, dealing with all the nonsense and the crappiness. And we tried to work it out for a short period of time, and it just, it did not work at all. I mean, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of comments. I'd appreciate it if everybody could be mature and professional, but it just is what it is. So I got a divorce on my birthday. And then shortly after the divorce, um, I just said, hey guys, I'd like to have a party, not really to celebrate being divorced, just to celebrate life. And like a lot of people showed up I mean, people I haven't seen in years and even people I've never met showed up. And I was like, wow, it was just, I had a ton of food. It was ridiculous. Like more food than I could eat in a lifetime. People just showed up and they just kept showing up. It was good to see everybody. It was good to just reconnect with everybody. I felt like, um, divorce will really isolate you to a point you never thought possible. So it was good to reconnect. And so speaking of reconnecting, I reconnected with a bunch of friends, some old, I made some new ones. Um, life just goes on. It's, it's kind of humbling how life can do that, where, you know, even when you think you're lonely and you're going to just despair that people are like, hey, man, let's go hang out. And I mean, even like literally recording this video, one of my new friends is like, hey, what are you doing today? So that's kind of good. Ah, dating. Yes, dating. Got to talk about, you can't talk about divorce without dating. So I took some time to heal. And I went out into the dating world and 
know really what to say about dating. It's changed since COVID. It's changed. I mean, I've been married since 2019. Um, we were in a relationship starting 2000, late 2016. So I haven't been on the dating scene in a while. Right. And dating has definitely changed. It's all online now. It's all very disconnected. I mean, you'll send a message to someone and never hear back or quite the opposite. You get a flood of people. Now, a lot of my guy friends have told me that when they go out, they don't get much luck. I mean, one of my friends even said it was a numbers game, meaning you have to shotgun your message out to a thousand women and then maybe two or three respond. That was not the experience I had. I had quite the opposite experience. I found, wow, that picture is very blurry for some reason. I found that uh, when I went out of the dating scene, being a mature guy with a good career and money and you know, I'm trying to be humble, I'm not a bad looking guy, there was a flood. I mean, a flood. More women that I could talk to in a lifetime. It was ridiculous. The problem is most of those women were, I don't want to talk bad about, most of those women were not women I would be interested in. And uh, I did meet some really nice women. I went on some nice dates, but it just... It just wasn't there. Um, there was one in particular that I kind of look back and think, mm, maybe I should have handled that differently. Um, I didn't want it to really go any further than it did. So I decided to distract myself with my projects. And I've been working on something called Magic 8-Ball, and I'll talk about that more in the video. I think I've talked about it ad nauseum on my YouTube channel. But I've really, really been getting into the stock market, and I've been making... A metric ton of money i mean it's i'm i'm at a literally at a loss for words because i can't believe that i can make this much money in the stock market it's ridiculous so um i know somebody watching this well, how are you doing it so that's something i'm going to talk about is magic eight ball and this is actual numbers if you don't know what magic eight ball is it is a stock market prediction software engine that i created and i put videos out on my youtube channel and i've just been pouring like all of my free time and energy into this thing um a because i love doing it and b i'm making a lot of money doing it and c it really keeps me distracted from all of the things that i've mentioned so far um if you don't know what like a butterfly a condor a vertical or a sonar are these are options trading for day trading they're just different types of margin trades basically uh sonar is one that I actually designed from scratch, but like butterfly condors and verticals are industry wide. So the accuracy, if you look at that accuracy line, that is what you really should focus on. You see like 85% all the way up to 97%. That means regardless of what time of day you log in, you can just literally copy and paste a trade from this engine into your stock broker and you have upwards of a 97% chance of making full profit on that trade. I mean, this is like alchemy turning lead into gold. This is ridiculous. Um, it has gotten huge. It's gotten really huge. And I have not even advertised this beyond just randomly talking about it in some of my YouTube videos. And I made a few how to videos. Um, it seems like everybody really wants to make money and this software makes it super easy to do that. So I personally trade SPX zero day, zero DTE, and I've been making some really good money lately. I've been experimenting with SXP, which is a smaller version of SPX. Um, basically if you don't know what those are, they track the S and P 500 the top 500 companies in the stock market. I don't want this to turn into a stock market video. This is my video blog. But um, yeah, if you're interested, there's a ton of videos in my YouTube channel, and I will talk about it a little bit towards the end here and show you the actual Discord. Um, but yeah, doing that, I've met a ton of people. Um, some of them, I don't even know what they look like. Um, this is all on the internet, on Discord. These are very smart people. Some of them way smarter than me. We talk about stocks constantly. I mean, my... My phone is sitting there next to me and it's vibrating because uh, I've got people in my stock group, even on New Year's Eve, sitting there talking about stocks and strategies and things like that. So it's it's actually very humbling that it's taken on a life of its own. And I feel very privileged and honored to be a part of this. Um, I also built this giant gaming computer. This is the actual computer right here, and I'll show you the specs later on. But uh, this is what I'm literally sitting on recording right now. Um, I love it. It's absolutely great. I just decided, you know what? I've been through hell and back this year and I've had this computer that I love and it's been rock solid, but I've had it since like 2013. I mean, it was literally 10 years old and it was starting to really struggle with video games. I had to replace the graphics card, but it was still bottlenecking. So I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm making a ton of money. I might as well just treat myself because I never really buy myself anything nice. So this is my 
my gaming computer slash video editing computer is massive. We'll go over the specs. And if you see over in the lower left-hand corner, a blood pressure cuff, I probably should have moved that. But yeah, I still have health issues. Um, so I just kind of pour my time and energy into things that allow my health to really maintain. Ah, yes. Before texting your ex, remind yourself why it ended. This is going to be a, a warning to everybody. This is a trigger alert for all those watching. Um rewind back to the beginning of this i went through a divorce and i don't want to say it was a nasty divorce but no divorce is ever fun right i think divorce wise this probably went as smooth and as fairly as it possibly could uh, we had a post-nuptial agreement and i would recommend anyone if you're getting married get a prenuptial agreement it will save you a ton of money i actually went out and started making a video series on divorce i haven't really um, advertised it yet but I'll show you that series here a little bit. I may actually put a link down below. But if you're already married, consider getting a post-nuptial agreement. And that's what we got. Um, the relationship wasn't going good. And I just basically sat there and said, hey, you know, I really want this. And if you don't want it, then it's time for us to end. And uh, we ended it. But then we briefly got back together. Uh, she wanted to sign the post-nuptial agreement. So we signed it. We gave it a try. It didn't work out. We ended up getting divorced anyways. But that post-nuptial agreement had just made... The divorce process very simple it was okay this is what we've already agreed upon and this is what's going to happen it wasn't a bunch of yelling and screaming it was just very fair to both of us but um uh, yeah we we started talking again recently no we're not like getting remarried or anything like that it's just i have a hard time letting friendships go and she was my wife she was my best friend for a while so i want to at the bare minimum, at least be on friendly terms with her. And I've never done that with an ex. It's whenever I'm with an ex and I hit that limit, done. I'm just, screw them, I'm done. Um, Yeah, I'm just giving her the benefit of the doubt, keeping my guard up, being very cautious and mindful about my situation and what I can achieve out in the dating world if I really wanted to. Because, like I said, you know, dating's changed and it's very, very crazy out there right now. All right. It's crazy how you can go months or years without talking to someone, but they still cross your mind every day. This this quote really hit me hard one day. I don't know why. God, why is that image so blurry? But uh, not necessarily about my ex, just about friends and people in life. You know, it's we're coming off the end of a pandemic, and then, you know, so many people in my life have just been disconnected. And there's people I haven't talked to in years, and I actually sat down and asked myself, why? You know, why have I been talking to some of my friends? So. Just reconnecting with people is really what I'm getting at. So what does the future hold? Um, I don't know. This is a really weird time in my life. I'm, I'm single for the first time in a long time. Um, I'm making a lot of money. It's an embarrassing amount of money, and I want to really focus on continuing that and then retiring and just enjoying life while I'm young enough to enjoy it because... Rewind, I almost died a few years ago. So that's ever present in my mind that, hey, that clock is ticking. Um, no, I'm not dying now. I do still have some health issues. And I see my doctors regularly. Um, I'm actually considered fairly healthy for my age. I'm only 49 years old. And I say only because 49 years old is still fairly young in terms of death. So they're still struggling to figure out why I almost died. So I meet with my doctors every three to six months. And... Some days are really good. Some days are not so good. And I just, you know, I deal with each day. That being said, I'm actually fairly active. I'm exercising. I'm dieting. I'm taking care of myself. I just have to be kind of cautious because we still just don't know. And that's always in the back of my mind. Um, whether or not I'm going to die, well, we're all going to die. You just got to make terms with that. But it's not going to be today. And family. Um, actually been reconnecting with family. Um, I, a lot of you don't know this, and I'm not going to really divulge a lot of it, but I grew up alone, and I recently, at 49 years old, connected with my mom and been chatting with her and gone down, and we've had lunch, and she's come up here, and we've had lunch. We've exchanged Christmas gifts. It's it's kind of weird. I'm, I'm eager to see where it goes. I've never really had much family that I connected with other than my daughter, so it's just kind of interesting to see where things are. So that's been the year in review so far, and let's just close that out. Let's flip over here. Um, as promised, um, this is Magic 8-Ball. This is the stock market engine I've been working on. It's all in Discord, and this has just grown out of proportion. Like, 
I'm still in awe. Let's see how many members we got here. At the time of this recording, we have 771 members. And that, let's just flip all the way back to the beginning. These are not dummy accounts. These are real accounts. These are people in here watching this thing and interacting. So to say this Discord server is busy is an understatement. And we're just in here constantly talking and exchanging things and trading ideas. And we have different mentors. This is not just me. This is not like an army of one kind of thing. I invite experts in here. So like we have like Ernie from Zero DTE. Um, I'm from Aramir Trading. We have Amplified Investing, Axe Options. Love you guys. Uh, Vance and team with Buy the Numbers. I mean, so these are some of the leading experts. And then we have people, you know, like Serto. He's not like a, he's not like, professionally selling his services he's just a really great guy that likes to share what he knows so we have you know just normal folks in here as well um and we have you know like option sandy she's really great i talk to her once in a while and here are the actual predictions i'm sure this is what everybody's wondering what they look like so i'm going to give you the old engine this is the old one right here so it gives you just a text wall here are the actual trades in case you're wondering what the heck i've been gibbering on about but you would just like copy the trade so there's an iron condor, you copy that and you paste it into your brokerage. Um, and then here's the actual charts. And so like, it gives you like a tracking chart. It's kind of a hot mess. I don't like the older version. You can see it's just kind of haphazard. I was still learning the charting engine. And then here's the sonar chart. This is a custom algorithm I wrote. And then here's the new version, which I have not yet published, but it's coming out very, very soon. You can see it's much, much sharper and better looking. So it has the text wall with more metrics. It has the trades, of course. And it has the tracking chart. And that may seem a little busy. It was kind of a busy day. And it has this quad chart. So it shows you the calls versus the puts. This is the internal market structure. And from there, it formulates a big calculation called sonar, which shows you exactly where that market's going to go. And it kind of breaks it out. So if you're curious, you can see the prediction is this gold line where the price is this magenta line. You can see them on the chart here. And I'll take something a little less busy. So this would be like XSP. You can see it's got the similar structure, but it shows you exactly, I mean, laser pointer where that thing's gonna go. And in terms of accuracy, let's balloon this out. I mean, this is how accurate it was on Friday. I mean, look at that, it's insane. I Sometimes I sit back and go, wow, I wrote this thing, but uh, I actually have a lot of computer skills. Um, if you've been watching my channel, you probably know that because Void Realms is mostly about computer education. Um, I haven't really done any Udemy videos this year. It's been a horrible year. And I haven't done a whole lot of YouTube videos either. They've mostly been about Magic 8-Ball. I was doing a Python 3 series where I was teaching Python. I kind of left off on that a few years ago. Um, I'm not giving up on recording. So if you really love my my educational stuff, especially computer programming, don't worry, I'm not giving up on it. I'm just between almost dying, having health issues and getting a divorce, I'm just spent and I need to take a breather on it. Um, so I've been focusing my time and energy on, you know, Magic 8-Ball, the stock market thing, along with I did a new YouTube channel called the Divorce Survival Guide. I have not even advertised this. This is really... I've thrown it on Facebook, but this is really the first time I've been talking about it publicly. And it's me talking about divorce and stages of the divorce and what you can expect and how to get over, you know, the heartbreak that you deal with in divorce and just how to deal with the legal system, because that is a minefield and they don't teach you that. I had to do a lot of research. So it's still fairly new and I haven't done a video in two months. I got to make another video here soon. And last but not least, here's the gaming computer that I built. I mean, this thing's just a beast. So when I'm not working on Magic 8-Ball, I'm actually playing video games. Um, we got the Intel Core i9, you know, 13K. We got the Kraken Z73 liquid cooler, Gigamite motherboard. I mean, more RAM than I know what to do with. I mean, I literally have 128 gigs of RAM in this thing. Um, four terabytes of storage. What am I going to do with four terabytes? I have no idea, but... You know, this graphics card, I mean, look at this. This was worth more money than some laptops that I've paid for just for the graphics card. And this thing's so big, it actually has a metal beam that holds the card up because without it, it would snap the motherboard in half. Um, it's just a beast, but I love it. And of course, a bunch of Noctua quiet fans and mouse and keyboard and all that. And the case, I got the Corsair 7000D Airflow. I mean, this computer's just a beast, but I absolutely love it. 
Um, I do all my video gaming and video recording on it. Um, I wish I had more time to spend on it, actually. But uh, So that, in a nutshell, has been my year. It's been a crazy year. It's been interesting. I've learned a lot about life. I've learned a lot about people. And I think most importantly, I've learned a lot about myself. Um, for example, let me flip back to these images here. When I thought about dating in the past, I never really, really looked at dating. You know, I've been out and dated before, but I never really cared about it too much, you know. And going out into the dating world was kind of shocking for me. I mean, just, I'm just a bald, older white guy. And there were a ton of women that were asking me out. It was ridiculous. Um, you may drop your own comments below and your own speculations as to why, but... It was just eye-opening me that uh, the world's changed like that. Divorce was, it was painful, and I don't think I'm still fully over it, but I think I'm way better than I was earlier in the year. So, anyways, that's my year in review. Um, if you're watching this, I hope you have a great year. I hope this next year brings all of us peace and happiness, and I'll see you in 2024.